Pantsir S-1 air defense systems near the Russian Interior Ministry Department in St. Petersburg. Our agent conducted surveillance of the Russian Interior Ministry Department for the Primorsky district of the city and shared some intriguing information with us, read a statement posted by the guerrillas on Telegram. The guerrillas criticized the placement of these systems, particularly given the Ukrainian forces' recent breakthroughs along the state border where air defense systems are in short supply. They described the move as very foolish. According to the guerrillas, Moscow and St. Petersburg remain the most heavily protected cities in Russia. To protect these cities, the Russian military command seems willing to sacrifice frontline cities. Meanwhile, residents of Kursk, Bryansk and Belgorod are left to fend for themselves, the partisans added. According to the Kyiv Post, the Pantsir missile system is a self-propelled surface-to-air missile and anti-aircraft artillery system designed to protect military, industrial and administrative installations from various airborne threats. It offers defense against aircraft, helicopters, precision munitions, cruise missiles and UAVs, particularly at low altitudes. According to open sources, the unit cost of the Pantsir ranges from $13.15 million to $14.67 million on the export market. Previously, President Volodymyr Zelensky mentioned in an interview with Indian media, we know where they have air defense and where they don't. Everything has been checked. He added, there is air defense around Putin's Dachas, around Moscow, in St. Petersburg, but in ordinary towns, like in the Kursk region, where we quickly advanced, there is nothing. In late June, the Atesh Partisan movement revealed it had identified a Pantsir S-1 air defense system in Sochi tasked with guarding Putin's dacha. Reports have increasingly indicated that Russia is deploying this air defense system in both its cities and occupied Crimea in response to attacks by Ukrainian long-range drones. Recall Ukraine wants Western approval to use long-range storm shadow missiles to target objectives deep within Russia to pressure Moscow into negotiating a ceasefire, according to The Guardian. The Guardian recalls President Zelensky's Independence Day speech in which he promised retaliation against the aggressor state for missile attacks on civilian areas. Our enemy will also know what the Ukrainian retaliation means, the president said. Worthy, symmetrical and long-range. They will know that, sooner or later. A Ukrainian response will reach any point in the Russian Federation that is a source of danger to the life of our state and our people, President Zelensky said. According to The Guardian, Kiev believes that demonstrating the Ukrainian military's capability to strike deep into Russia might prompt the Kremlin to reassess its strategy. Earlier, the Pentagon stated that Ukraine has the right to strike Russian territory but only in specific border areas, being shelled by Russians and within a limited distance. Russia will only consider negotiations with Ukraine when it believes Kyiv is in a position to threaten Moscow and St. Petersburg. The Guardian reported this, citing sources. The article notes that Kyiv is asking the West for permission to strike deep inside Russia with long-range storm shadow missiles. Ukrainian officials believe that using these Anglo-French weapons in a demonstration attack could show Russian authorities that military sites near Moscow might be vulnerable to direct hits. The thinking, according to a senior government official, is that Russia will consider negotiating only if it believes Ukraine had the ability to threaten Moscow and St. Petersburg. This is a high-risk strategy, however, and does not so far have the support of the US, the article reads. It was noted that Ukraine has been lobbying for months to be allowed to use storm shadow missiles against targets inside Russia, but with little success. Nevertheless, as the Ukrainian army struggles on the Eastern Front, there is a growing belief that its best hope lies in a counter-attack, the Guardian added. Recall, storm shadow missiles were developed primarily by an Anglo-French collaboration and are made by European joint venture MBDA, which also has an Italian partner. But because some of its components are supplied by the US, the White House also has to agree to its use inside Russia. It has so far refused to do so, fearing an escalation of the conflict. 
U.S. officials told news website Politico that they believed Storm Shadow and other long-range missiles might not be accurate enough over great distances and that the Russian jet fighters that launched glide bombs into Ukrainian frontline areas were largely based out of range of the missiles as a precaution. John Foreman, a former UK defence attaché to Russia and Ukraine, said Kyiv should not get sucked into a sideshow by fixating on possible use of storm shadow and should instead focus on defending the Donbass. Russia is considered to believe it can break Ukraine through attrition and is estimated by Kyiv to have about 600,000 troops inside the country. Capturing Pokrovsk in the Donbass ahead of the US presidential election in November would be designed to demonstrate to a new occupant of the White House that Ukraine was fighting a losing battle.